As a security expert, I'm often asked whether a VPN is worth it and what the best VPNs are on the market today. And like so many things in security, the answer really depends on what your goal is. For some people, a VPN is an absolute necessity to protect their privacy and keep them safe. For others, it's really pointless and they don't have any day-to-day -day need for it. So in this video, we're gonna cover how a VPN works so you know just how secure it is, the primary use cases for a VPN so you can figure out if it's really the right fit for you, and then we're gonna go over the top five VPN providers in the market today so you can pick the right one for you. All right, let's do this. A VPN creates an encrypted tunnel for your internet traffic. Now, it's not as complete as you may think it is because it's not a full tunnel from your device to whatever website you're trying to connect to. When a VPN tunnel is created, it goes from your laptop to the VPN server that it's configured to connect to. And that is where the secure tunnel works. The benefit of this is that anyone that's in between that connection can't see what the traffic is or even the websites that you're trying to visit. So now that we have a primer on what a VPN is and how it works, Let's talk about whether you really need one. Many are gonna say that it's more secure, and they're right, because it is creating that encrypted tunnel at least up to that VPN service. The flip side to this is that the majority of internet traffic today is already encrypted. That's that little HTTPS or the little lock that you'll see in the address bar. And then we have the privacy argument. And I think this is really the biggest argument for using a VPN because they really do help protect your privacy at least for the things like your websites that you're visiting or where you're originating from. This is important because your internet service provider or whoever you're connecting the internet with is going to see all the different web pages that you access, even if it's over an encrypted tunnel. That's because it's looking at where the destination is going to and it has to happen even if that data is encrypted. When you're using a VPN, the only thing that the ISP is going to see is that you're connecting to a VPN server. They can't see what websites you're trying to view. So if you don't want people to see what websites you're going to, a VPN is a really good solution for you. The other area of privacy is around being able to bypass certain restrictions depending on where you live. Some countries will filter out certain websites that they don't want you to visit and using a VPN can help you bypass those. Of course, you wanna understand all the local laws because in certain countries, it is a big penalty if they catch you using a VPN. In fact, in those countries, they typically will try to block VPNs in the first place. That brings us to the last argument, which is convenience. You can really change wherever you show up in the world using a VPN. So let's say that you were traveling the world and you wanna finish watching some of the shows that you were streaming from your country of origin. Well, Netflix has gates on the content you can view depending on where you live. So if you started watching something in the US and then traveled over to the UK, chances are you might not be able to watch that show. So in this case, you could just fire up your VPN, connect to a server that's located in the US, and then go and connect to Netflix. And from Netflix perspective, all they can see is that you're connected from the US because they just see the connection from that US-based server. So if you're looking at using a VPN from a security perspective alone, it's probably not the best use for you, but if you're looking from security, certainly privacy, and then from a convenience standpoint, it really is just worth it because it opens up a world of possibilities for you. Now, if you go to any VPN's website, there is so much marketing on there and it's really difficult to understand exactly what you're getting and they're all trying to compete with each other. So the way that I looked at this was really from four unique things. The first is performance. How many servers do they have? How many countries do they operate in? And what's the speed? Is it gonna be able to keep up with all the content streaming that I wanna be able to do over a VPN? Next, I looked at security and privacy. Is the VPN provider going to keep my information safe and secure? Then I looked at supported devices. I wanna make sure that this VPN is gonna be able to get installed on my desktop, my laptop, my phone, and any other devices that I might wanna connect through the VPN. And then lastly, of course, I had to look at price. I am not willing to pay a fortune for a VPN based on the benefits it's gonna give me, so I need to find something that's in the sweet spot for me. Now, I scoured the web and I found the top five VPNs that I think have the best running here to be the right VPN for you. So let's dig into each one and we'll take a look at the different features that they have and what it's gonna cost you so that you can figure out what the right solution is for you. First up, we have NordVPN. And I'll just cut to the chase here. This one is pretty good. If we look at performance, they have over 6,000 servers, even though their marketing website says it's only 5,000. 
and they're in over 60 countries worldwide. From a privacy perspective, they verify that they have no logs. What this means is that they are not storing any of the information related to your connections to the VPN server. This is gonna make sure that there's no record of the URLs you visited or where you're coming from. So overall, you wanna look for this. They also independently verify it using a third party. That means they can't just make this up. They have somebody come in and validate that when they're saying there are no logs, there really are no logs. And then from a speed perspective, I looked at ZDNet who did a really thorough analysis of all of the different speeds for VPNs. I'll include a link in the description. And what I found from them is that they had an average upload speed of about 17 and an average download speed of 48. That's megabits per second. Now, for most of what you're gonna be doing, that's perfectly fine. You're not gonna run into too many issues with that. The next thing I'm gonna talk about here is this kill switch. A kill switch just monitors that VPN connection to see that if you get disconnected from that VPN server for whatever reason, it will kill all of your internet traffic so that you don't accidentally connect to something outside of the VPN. This is really just a safety feature that can help give you more peace of mind that your data is securely going through the VPN. In terms of the supported devices, they have just about everything. Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, your uh, iPhone. They have web browser extensions for Chrome, Firefox, Edge. They even have Android TV, which I think is pretty cool. And we can also see that they support your gaming consoles, which is also just a cool value add if for whatever reason you needed to do that. So one thing to keep in mind with NordVPN is that it only allows six devices to be connected concurrently. Now they do offer an option to put this on your router, which means that anything connected behind that router would be going through the VPN. So there's a little bit of a workaround there. And then that brings us to pricing here. So. You can see that they have a couple different tiers available. The standard, which is really just your VPN, the malware protection, and your tracker and ad blocker, three bucks a month, not too shabby. If you do decide to upgrade for an additional dollar a month, you get access to a password manager, which is NordPass. And then you do unlock that data breach scanner that I mentioned before. That's just that dark web monitoring. So for what we have, I think it's one of the better options that are out there, but there are still some other options that are cheaper, some even free that we're gonna cover next. The next VPN provider we're gonna look at is ProtonVPN. ProtonVPN is another really good option for you. You can see from the performance side, they have over 70 countries available with over 3,000 servers. So you're gonna have a lot of options here. When we're talking speed, ZDNet found that they had an average download speed of 39 and an upload speed of 12. So pretty similar to what we saw with NordVPN. Now for ProtonVPN, just like every other one of those services that they provide, they are all about privacy. They do have a policy of never keeping logs. Uh, and similar to what we saw with NordVPN, they also had that independently audited and verified. So you know that you're dealing with some pretty good privacy here. When we're talking about the different features here, you're gonna see a lot of the same things. Again, this is where marketing gets in the way a bit here, but there's a few that I do wanna call out. The first is gonna be the NetShield ad blocker. That is going to block malicious scripts, ads, and also malicious domains that are identified as being, well, malicious. You can also see here that they have a kill switch, which is a good feature for you there. So we're kind of seeing an apples to apples comparison with a lot of these features here. Where it does separate is on the price. Now, if you go to their pricing page, it can be a little bit difficult to see because you have a one month plan, which is $10 a month. You have a two year plan, which drops it down to $5 a month. And then you have a one year plan, which puts it at $6 a month. So it is a little bit pricier if you go with a paid option. Now, ProtonVPN does offer a free version, but it was getting a little bit weird here because when I would try to go look for it at the checkout page, it actually would pop up and then disappear. So it might show up for you, it might not, but they do in fact have a free version available. It only supports up to three countries, though in some areas it said five, and it has unlimited bandwidth. So this might be a good option for you if you just need one from time to time, you can just fire it up and you're probably gonna be fine in that case. Assuming of course you can actually find the link to download that. Now, if you are looking for a full featured solution here, this is where I think the biggest selling point for Proton is you can get a whole bundle for just about as much as what you were gonna be paying for just the VPN, where it's gonna include the VPN, mail, a calendar, your drive, and Proton Pass. All right, next up, we have ExpressVPN. And I was fairly excited about this one to start because I heard a lot of good things about it. 
And then I started digging into it. In terms of performance, it has servers in 105 countries. I couldn't quite find the total number of servers that they have. So we're gonna have to just deal with that. ZDNet speed testing gave it about 49 down on average and 15 up, so consistent with the other ones. And from a privacy perspective, they also have a no log policy, which is independently validated. From a supported device perspective, you can use it on up to eight devices and they have support for almost everything here. So similar to NordVPN in that regard. From a feature standpoint, they have what you'd expect if you've heard the other two so far, where they have tracker blockers, that's gonna include the ads and malicious sites. And they also include a password manager. You don't even have the option to get rid of that. They just throw it in there. So it's a nice to have, but this is not the password manager that I would use. So it's kind of forcing your hand on it. Now I sounded pessimistic about this one when I first brought it up and I'll tell you why. It's the price. It's over $8 a month. So while the other ones they can add up if you put in all these different features or go with a, a premium service with there, this one just starts off really high and I don't know why. So that's why I downgraded this one because I just don't understand why the price is equal to what it is, especially when you compare on a function by function basis to the other ones that we're looking at. The next one we're gonna look at is Surfshark. Now this one has been making a lot of waves, pun intended because it's a newer player, but people are really liking it. Now, if I look at the performance, servers over 100 countries, 3,200 servers in total. So on par with Proton as well as NordVPN. From a privacy perspective, same old story here, no log policy, also audited. If we look at ZDNet speed tests, very similar results, 47 down, 14 up. So really on par with everything else that we have. From a features perspective, we're not gonna see any surprises here. We have clean web, which is gonna be the ad blocker, getting rid of all of the ads, but also malicious trackers and any websites that are deemed to be malicious. Here's where it gets interested. It offers unlimited devices. That's very different than what we've seen from some of these other ones. So that's a pretty big selling point there by itself. They have something called bypasser mode, which is the split tunneling that we talked about before. So you can allow certain apps or websites to bypass the VPN so that it can just be a little bit easier to manage there. And then lastly, they also have the kill switch that will kill off the internet connection if for some reason you get dropped from that VPN. From a supported device perspective, again, they have just about everything. All your major browsers, if you wanna use the browser extension, they've got your phones for Android and iOS. Your Macs, Windows, Linux, Fire TV, that's always fun. So yeah, they're gonna have just about everything you need here. Then that brings us to the price, which is really what matters most here. So if we look at that, we can see that the starter package, which is gonna be the VPN, the ad blocker, and then they have this cookie pop-up blocker, that's gonna be two bucks a month, not too bad. You can upgrade to get antivirus, which if you don't have an AV for an extra 70 cents a month, you can get AV with that. I didn't look at the AV yet, so you know your mileage is probably gonna vary there. But you also will get some identity protection here. This is going to be breach alerts, so similar to that dark web monitoring that we talked about before included in that, and you get some other different reports. And if you really wanted to go all in on this for $4 a month, you get everything we just talked about, but also data removal. Data removal is this new thing that will help remove your personal information from other websites. And so basically this is working with a third party to go request these websites, take your information offline. So that brings us to the last VPN provider that we're gonna look at today. It's private internet access. From a performance perspective, they have servers in 91 countries. And this was another one where it wasn't really clear on the number of servers that they had. So we're just gonna have to go off the countries on this one. In terms of speed, ZDNet clocked them in on average at 43 down, 11 up. And from a privacy perspective, same thing that we've seen on every other one. There is a no log policy independently audited. So you're gonna be good from that perspective. When we look at all the different features that they have available, we can see some that we're familiar with now. They have the split tunneling option here. There's a kill switch that you're not gonna see it on this page here. And another good benefit here is that they have unlimited number of devices that you can connect. And when you look at all the things that you can download, they have coverage for, again, just about everything that you need. So that leaves us just on the pricing then. If we look at that and compare it to others, we can see that they do a similar way of just a really weird thing where they have a one month where you can pay monthly, you have a year, and then if you're really feeling it, you can go in with a three-year one for $2 a month. So 
you're looking from anywhere from $2 a month with a three-year commitment to upwards of $12 a month for a one-month commitment. If you were to go and click through this, you can see that you can also add antivirus here if you really wanted to. That's an extra dollar a month. Now, after I reviewed all of these, there's one thing that really stood out to me. Most of these VPNs are the exact same. Yes, you're gonna have some different features here or there. You're gonna have some VPNs that are gonna provide you some cool add-ons like an AV if you really want that. But at the end of the day, most of the features were the same. Most of the geographic spread and the number of the servers were comparable. So it really comes down to price here. Now I put together this table here to kind of give you an idea of how everything lines up here. And you can see that NordVPN is really one of the leaders here. I also did like Proton VPN, especially if you wanted to go with the larger set of services or if you just wanted the free option. I think Surfshark is another great contender here because it's one of the cheaper options that are out there and it has a lot of features baked in by default, not to mention the unlimited number of devices that you can install this on. So my advice to you is if you're gonna be using this sparingly where you just wanna use it, say when you're traveling or in some sketchy areas, you might wanna just look at the free version from Proton VPN and just keep that in your back pocket when you absolutely need it. If you're more concerned about your privacy and you wanna have this always on, I think NordVPN and Surfshark are gonna be your top bets there because they have all of the functionality for a cheaper price. But really, at the end of the day, you're not gonna go wrong with any of these solutions. So it really comes down to whatever you feel most comfortable with. Now, I'm looking at doing some additional videos to do deep dives on how to set these up and how to use all the features. If that's something you'd like, let me know in the comments and tell me which ones that you're really interested in so we can do a deeper dive together. And if you're looking for something that's gonna really take your personal security to the next level, I recommend looking at a password manager and you can check out all of my different videos covering the most popular password managers out here in this playlist.